In terms of what we're doing today, so my name, my name's Mal Whittacom. Um, I've been, I teach methods, math methods and spech at Geelong Grammar School. Um, it's my 27th year coming up this year, unit three and four math methods, 27th year in a row I've done it. So um, I've got a lot of experience in this area and um, what I'm really hoping to do is pass it on to you today. Um, I've had experience doing exam marking for VCAR and so even though this is January the 9th or whatever, I'll be trying to really pitch this as a, a, a the idea of this is what we look for in, in exams, is what we give marks to in exams, is what we don't give it marks to. So right from the start, you start thinking about that. Um, for you, you know, you're probably thinking at this stage, you know, exams are a long way away and they certainly are. You've got SACs to do before that and a whole lot of other, you know, tests you'll have during the year. But I think it's always worth keeping in mind what the exams will be like because the bottom line is the exam is what going to drive, is going to drive most of your score. So make sure you do um, keep that in your mind and I'll be talking in terms of exams right from the word go today. Okay, so um, what else? Um, so today is the head start section, uh, sorry, is the prereq section. So this is in theory about what you already know from unit one and two last year. Now I've got that asterisk there because as we all know, unit one and two last year wasn't our regular unit one and two from um, any other year. So lots of schools had different amounts of shutdown, different amounts of um, tech capability. Um, some students had better access than others. It's really hard. We didn't have, you didn't all have that regular full year of unit one, two preparation. So this is what we'd expect you to know. There may well be some stuff in here that you have never ever seen before. So make sure you let me know if I've got time, I'll fill in some blanks, but um, this really is about saying this is what you've done and obviously at your school, your teacher will be aware of what they may have glossed over last year and they'll no doubt fill those gaps in this year just like just like I'll be doing with my classes. Um, in your book, you got this big, you should have this big book here or something like that. Uh, what happens here is you'll be flicking back and forwards because the front half of the book has a theory or as you call it here, the, uh, the what's it called? Um, the theory and examples is in the first half of the book. And the second half of the book from about page, we around about the page 140 onwards is about the questions. So we're going back and forth between the two. I'll definitely be asking you to do questions today, okay? I want you to do questions um, to, to make sure you do it because you never ever get asked in an exam, you know, you know, give us a discuss how factorization works. You'll be answering questions. So it's important to be able to do that from the word go. Um, in terms of the level, I'm going to pitch this at. I'm, I'm very well aware that amongst the, you know, hundred or so people we've got in the in the room, um, there'll be people who are who are hoping to get say a high forties to a to um, a high forty score, down to those who just hope to get twenty five or thirty. So there'll be quite a range of students. Um, what I know from last year, from twenty twenty, is that the average average ATAR of the students who um, who work with TCFX during the year was ninety two or ninety two and a bit. So that means that your ballpark figures are around about a forty students. So I'll be trying to pitch my my work so that it's um, uh, you know, give me a, a, a nice challenging questions and you want to do challenging questions. And again, right from the word go, you're better off doing challenging questions than just doing easy questions. You know, if you're a tennis player, you get better by playing against better tennis players. If you're, you know, if you, if you love reading, you don't just read spot or Trump tweets, you read something that's a bit more challenging to try and improve how you go. So in maths, we're not going to do many, many really easy questions with the odd warm up one, but most of them will be hopefully a challenging one. So I'll try to pick the questions so they're either challenging or they're questions that are often examined, that are often examined and therefore worthwhile to do. So that's my plan. So starting from the start of your book. Now, look, this book goes for, you know, it's, and, it's 276 pages, okay? Um, there's around about 160 questions in there. We are not going to get all these questions done. We're not going to get everything looked at in a four-hour, you know, four-hour lecture. That's not possible. But we always like a TSFX to give you more questions. So you can always go back and try a few of ones similar to what you might have had trouble with or you're interested in. So we won't get through them all. We'll just do a subsection of them. Like I said, I've picked them because I think they're either important or they're heavily examined questions. So it's a little bit of theory before we skip down to doing some questions because I really do like doing questions. Mm -hmm.